Welcome back to another Matty Ice Reviews. Today, guys, we will be continuing as seen on TV reviews. I'm super excited about today's product. We've got our copper griddle. This is a 12 inch griddle. It's going to have stainless steel induction. You can do a whole bunch of things with it. You can cook stuff in the oven. You can cook on a stove top. You can cook on a grill. It does it all. And it's a good size. It's 12 inches. This was actually a Christmas present from Little Bird. As you might remember, she's been in a couple videos and she's a fan of the reviews. So thank you very much. I'm always excited to get things to try. I have a glass top stove. It's not, you know, exposed coils that are heated up and it's not gas. So I'm wondering how this will work on there. The other thing to know about these copper pans before we begin, uh, you do not have to season this, which I love. I absolutely hate when you have to season these. They do recommend that if you're going to use anything with these, they say you don't need to use any type of oils or butters. Let's get set up and let's keep on going with the review. What you'll see here is that I've already cleaned this and it, it did have a little bit of material on it, so I do recommend cleaning it like they say in the directions. And then the directions did actually, in fact, tell us a few important things. It does uh, give you some warnings in here to, you know, read these before you do everything and the preparation. All right, before using, wash with soap while cooking. They recommend medium heat to get the best overall distribution of heat over the whole pan. Cooking on high can lead to hot spots where food will burn. So if you're going to use some type of oil or butter with this, they do recommend something with a high smoke point. Uh, otherwise, you'll start to get some funny buildup on this pan. And they don't recommend olive oil because it'll leave a carbonized type of coating on here. And you'll notice you'll get parts that stick. Other than that, it says it's dishwasher safe. And then for utensils, they do recommend using something that's non-metal. So we're going to turn this stove. Yeah, let's do like a medium, medium high. And then what we're going to be cooking today, we're going to, we got a couple things. For the cooktop, we're going to start with some eggs. We're going to do some ready bacon. I don't have regular bacon, but I, it's, it'll be interesting to see how this cooks up on there. We've got some frozen natural casing hot dogs. We've got to let this heat up for a little bit. I can already feel heat starting to go through the pan. It's all concentrated in the middle where this circle is. I'm not feeling any heat yet on the outside. All right, guys, so we've... Full, we've heated it up, I think, enough. I put a couple droplets of water on there, and they did appear to go away. All right, let's get an egg right here. Uh-oh. Well, I hope that's not going to be a problem. That egg slid right to the side. Yeah. Let's try another egg. Um, and I don't know what to do there. Hopefully it doesn't slide. And that's sliding the other way. Eggs are a uh, work in progress. We're going to have to see what we can do about that. That wasn't good. Oh, that's kind of interesting. You see how the egg white's slowly peeling itself up and <laughs> folding the same way? Put those. I'll put one here. I'll put one towards there. And then let's put another one right here, right on the middle. And this is a natural casing. We'll leave all the ice on there and everything. I'm not defrosting that. All right, guys, so you can hear the bacon's actually starting to sizzle. Um, it is starting to heat up very decently now. The egg down here is starting to, you know, cook up enough that I'm going to be able to move it back on, but the egg that's up there is still fairly um, uncooked. Frank that we have on there is starting to heat up decently. The ice is melting on it. Okay, this egg is getting to the point where I might be able to move it. Let's see. I think we will be able to, so let's slide this hot dog over a little bit. It's fighting a little bit. It's still not fully formed. Really difficult to get this into one area. Tell you what, so this actually cooks. Let's just flip it over right now. This one seems to be doing a lot better. I'm going to use this to work up the edges. Let's see if I can't get this back where it needs to be. Okay, so this is this has been a little bit of a mess with the eggs so far. They don't they don't seem to be working that great. Let's see if we can flip the egg again. Okay, it, it's cooking. It's just very odd. I'm gonna have to practice more with how to get the eggs on here perfectly. I think you have to have this just a bit hotter before you put eggs on there because if it's hot enough, the eggs will start to cook and then they won't slide away. I think that was the problem we made here. I like crispy bacon, just the way God intended it. Starting to get a nice little 
brown on it. It's warm, but you can tell it's still frozen inside. I can squeeze this thing and it's, it's still cold. All right, guys, let's try and get another flip on these eggs. I think the other side, yeah, that looks like it's starting to get pretty cooked. We still look like we got a little weird yolk going on there, but whatever. Hot dog, starting to get brown on one side. And I think these eggs just gotta be about done. I'm gonna pull those off. I don't see any parts that are still gooey or raw, so we should be good. Okay, so there's our eggs. As you can see, this part, it is, there is some burn on there, but it very easily right there just pushes right off. Let's uh, let's get ourselves another egg and see if we can't get this thing perfect. All right, we're gonna very slowly crack it onto there. It still wants to run off, even when I give it a second to sit. That see that worked a lot better. That worked a lot better. It still ran off to the side, but we can kind of like pick that up. There you go. That's what I was expecting when I did this. I wanted it to kind of stay in one area, not run all over the place. Okay, the egg seems like it's progressing nicely. It's still, as you can see, we still got a little bit of uncooked white there. But it's it's at least holding together and the bottom's browning up fairly quickly. So let's, uh, let's try and flip this egg real quick. Do a quick flip. All right, now it's just a waiting game. Let's pull the hot dog off. Alright, let's check how our egg's doing on this side. Let's flip her over real quick. That looks like it's going well. I can still see the yolk isn't fully cooked in there. As you can see, I just squished a little bit and there is still some raw yolk in there. Alright guys, that should be it for the eggs. As you can see, the yolk is uh, fully cooked up now, so we're going to pull that off. And then we're going to let this copper griddle cool down. Um, as you can see, anything that's burnt on here does you can just literally scrape it off. I'm not even putting any effort into that. It just pushes right away. Even the stuff down here that was burning in the corner, it, it's pulling right off. So that's good news. Let's let this cool down and uh, let's, uh, let's see how our food was. Bacon actually did turn out nice and crispy. As you can see, it breaks off and it does have a good crunch to it. Eggs that we cooked first down here. There's the egg and as you can see, it is cooked. This is the first of this is one of the two eggs to be cooked first yeah it's done it's still soft inside a little bit more cooked than i wanted to now let's get that last egg we were cooking the one where we left the yolk trapped inside okay this one looks like it's cooked much better you can see it's still piping hot and the yolk is good on the inside it's nice and soft it's it's perfectly cooked in my opinion that one turned out much better that's cooked really well we're gonna cut open our hot dog okay there's our hot dog as you can see, it's nice and piping hot. Skin still has a really good crunch to it. This one turned out really well too. So our copper griddle has cooled down sufficiently now that I can handle it. Here you go. That's all the aftermath from the breakfast we cooked. It looks pretty clean. Supposedly, according to the instructions, all you have to do is soap and water. And then you can put it in the dishwasher too, which is cool. So let's get a little soap on here. And actually, tell you what, we'll use another As Seen on TV product. Better sponge. Let's get some soap on our better sponge and let's get a little water running. Let's just start scrubbing around and see if the stuff truly comes off. All right, so there you go. Besides water, there's nothing on there, guys. This thing cleaned extremely well. So let's go ahead and dry it off and then we'll start with our next experiment. Alright guys, so we're going to continue the test. We've got our oven preheated 350 and the other part that this thing claims is being able to be used in the oven as a baking accessory. So here we've got ourselves a nice piece of sockeye salmon. We're not going to put any olive oil on it. That's my typical go-to. I'm going to take a very small sliver of unsalted butter I'm just going to place that right on top. Put a couple drops of lime juice on there just so we have some acid on this. I do like having something citrus on my fish. It just makes everything better. Okay, let's get a little salt on here. It's just some salt I'm grinding up. Just need a little coating on the top, that's all. We're ready to go in the oven, so we're going to back you guys up a little bit. And this thing does have some nice handles on the side, so you can pick it up and hold it like such and we're just going to slide it right in the oven 
it's only going to take about 16 minutes, maybe 18, at most 20, to have this thing cooked to perfection. So we'll come back when this is done and we'll see how it goes. Here's our salmon. It was cooked to it for 18 minutes. Uh, we have some burn marks from the butter that's hit the plate. The skin on the bottom side is nice and caramelized. Okay, let's see how the salmon cooks. We have some nice tender, looks like flaky fish meat. It's going to be hot as hell. There you go. See, there's our, there's, our, there's our fish. It seems to be flaking pretty well. So let's uh, blow it off and let's take a bite. That's really good. I think this did really well though. So we are going to do a torture test. We are going to put things on here and attempt to burn them onto here and see how difficult it is to get off a burned off stain. Provolone cheese. I'm going to take two slices of this very thin cut provolone, so it's like a thick slice of regular. And we're just going to throw it down right here on the side and let that go. Chunky Jif peanut butter. I thought this would be interesting because peanut butter is oily, so I, I don't know if this will burn on or if it will cause problems for the pan. Hopefully it doesn't ruin it. We've got barbecue sauce. We got some stuff hissing on this pan already. I, already, I made sure it was nice and hot this time. This is a Ghiardelli. Milk chocolate caramel square. So we're just gonna place her down right there and see what happens. We're gonna let this go for a little bit and then we'll check back in on it. All right, things are really starting to happen. This cheese is really starting to get brown. Let's see if we can actually flip that a little bit. And you see that's really getting dark on that side. So it, it's, it's burning, that's for sure. It's just not sticking to the pan at all. Peanut butter is really melted and it's losing a lot of its like liquid content and then the barbecue sauce you can see that's scorched caramel scorching as well and the chocolate eh, it's still you know this Ghirardelli chocolate is not really melting away in here so it's it's still holding its shape somewhat that's disappointing all right guys I'm gonna move it off the heat now everything is burning on here you can there's smoke literally like coming up I don't want to set off the smoke detector, so we're going to take this off and set this on a couple pot holders and let it cool down and see what happens with these burnt things. If look at that. That stuff is burnt on there. That chocolate's looking bad. That peanut butter is looking bad. That cheese. That's a lot of damage. So uh, let's let this cool down and we'll come back. It's been almost uh, 45 minutes since I burned this stuff onto here, and it's cool now. I can actually touch it. So here's what we got. The cheese at the top, as you can see, didn't stick at all. Just slides around freely, leaves it behind a little oil. Okay, so here's a little close-up view of this. And here you can see where it got all sticky and all those sugars broke down. I mean, it's, it is coming off if you push at it. Like if I were to push down on this, it will pick up and slide around, but it looks like it did stick a little bit. Now our mess of caramel and chocolate. Oh, good lord. Let's see what's going to happen with this. Uh-oh. It's, it's crispy. I mean, it's budging a little bit, but it does not want to come off. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing at that, and it's... Oh, God, it's really baked on. There we go. So we just broke off a piece, and then there's what's left behind. Nothing. So let's try that again. Oh, it all broke free. And look at that. That was burned as can be. Uh, wow, I'm really impressed so far. I'm going to take this over to the sink and clean it, and then we're going to see if it actually comes fully clean. How did our copper griddle fare? Well, here it is. As you can see, that stuff came off fairly easy. So it did an amazing job. As you can see, it looks brand new still. They seem to be really well made, uh, much better than red copper stuff. So I'm going to say that this one's a really good product. I would give this a 9 out of 10 just because I'm taking off points for the fact that those eggs slid around on there. And they don't seem to cook quite as well. That might be due to our stove being unlevel or something of that nature. But I think they're really good pans and I recommend you get one. That's going to do it for this one, guys. We'll catch you next time. Have a good night.